everyone, today's video is about mental health, depression, and anxiety. First thing I want to say is that, um, obviously I'm not a doctor, I'm just a stupid kid from the internet. And I said that in one of my videos, but it's true, I am. And I'm just a stupid kid from the internet that went through it. So, I'm not, I don't want to come off like I think that I know everything about this stuff, or that I do know everything. I don't. I definitely don't know everything. However, I have gone through a lot of it, so I do know my experiences and I can just use my experiences to help you guys. Another thing is that in the past I have gotten made fun of for, well, I don't get made fun of it for it as much as I did, but I used to get made fun of it for the reason that like people must have thought that I wanted attention like because I went through the stuff I deserve attention or whatever but that's not the case I just really want to help you guys I really love helping people and it's just because I think that my story can help you guys so um it's really not me looking for attention I got through what I had to get through and I'm better and I'm just looking back on it to kind of share my story and help you guys so basically, I was told that I have the following, anxiety, depression, and borderline personality disorder. Now borderline personality disorder isn't actually like, um, a lot of people think when I tell them that, they think, oh my god, you have like three personalities. No, that's not that. That's split personality disorder. Borderline personality disorder is totally different. It's kind of like you can't deal with your emotions a certain way, and you lash out against other people. Borderline Personality Disorder, BPD, also called Emotionally Unstable Personality Disorder, is a Cluster B personality disorder, the essential feature of which is a pattern of marked instability of effects, interpersonal relationships, and self-image. The pattern is present by early adulthood and occurs across a variety of situations and context. Other symptoms usually include intense fears of abandonment and intense anger and irritability, the reason for which others have difficulty understanding. Self-harm and suicidal behavior are common. Everything that I've dealt with is under control. I am on medicine and before, like, a lot of people have different opinions on medicines and I have my opinions on, the, on medicine too. Um, at the time, I was younger when I was put on it, and obviously I didn't really have, it's not that I didn't have a choice, but it was kind of my parents' choice and kind of my doctor's. It wasn't really, I didn't get asked, do you want to be put on this? At the time, it's what they thought I needed, but obviously I have different outlooks and different opinions on medicine, and I don't want to get too much into medicine because it's like, I'm not a doctor. I can't really tell you what it, like I know it well I know what it does obviously because I take it but it balances you your hormones you know it's supposed to make you feel better but one thing I must say is that a lot of people don't realize that medicine's not gonna make you wake up and say I'm happy it's gonna control your things but if you are suicidal or you need help or anything like that get the help that you need that leads me to another point um don't be afraid to ask for help if you're struggling with any depression or any any mental disorder, anxiety. Don't be scared to ask for help. Therapy and things like that, those are not bad things. I feel like a lot of people are ashamed to say that they go to therapy or that they um they have a psychiatrist or whatever. I was too for a long time. I feel like when you hurt your arm, you go to the doctors. When you are not okay up there you go to the doctors it's the same as any part of your body so the first thing I'm kind of going to go into depth about is depression this is something I've dealt with since I was a little girl and obviously if you guys have watched my previous videos you know that I've struggled with it and I've over I've overcome it I overcame it I have overcame my depression and I'm a lot better now I struggle with depression and self-harm um by the way a side note I'm one year strong I'm one year and like one year and five months so that's a big deal for me that's the longest I've ever gone without cutting since I was like 10 so that's a really big accomplishment for me but anyways depression now 
my personal outlook on depression, it's a sickness. It's an illness that needs to be taken care of like any other illness. And um, depression, I feel like that term gets tossed around a lot when a lot of people don't have it. Depression is a mental illness. It's not just something you say when you're mad that your mom won't let you go somewhere. It's a mental illness. The term depression gets tossed around way too much. Depression isn't just being sad. It's okay to be sad. I feel like people are too quick to jump on things. Like if you're having a bad day, you're not depressed. You are not clinically depressed because you have a bad day. If you have a bad couple years, you might be, but that's a different story. You're not clinically depressed if you have a bad day. Everyone occasionally feels blue or sad, but these feelings are usually short-lived and pass within a couple of days. When you have depression, it interferes with daily life and, and causes pain for both you and those who care about you. Depression is a common but serious illness. Many people with depressive illness never seek treatment, but the majority, even those most severe depression, can get better. Medications, psychiatrists, and other methods can effectively treat people with the depression. There are obviously different types of depression. There's major depressions, persistent depressive disorder, and there's psychotic depression, manic depression disorder, which is bipolar. So clinical depression, what I have, is when you feel hopeless or down all the time. You feel like you're never going to get through this. And for a long time, that's how I felt. In today's society, a lot of people think it's cool to be depressed. It's cool to have something wrong with you. And if you don't have something wrong with you, then that is what's wrong with you. It's alright to be happy with your life. It's more than alright. Anyone who really struggles with depression or self-harm, anxiety, knows what I'm talking about. Like, it's not something you should toss around. When you have a mental disorder, you don't throw it in people's faces. You can't. I guess people should be more compassionate when there's an issue, but for example, if you're dating a boy and he breaks up with you for totally different reasons, you can't pull the I'm depressed, don't leave me card because that's wrong. You can't use your illness as a crutch to stand on and to build relationships because that doesn't that's not how that works. And I feel like in today's society a lot of people do that. A lot of people glorify it, they think it's cool, it's cool to be depressed, it's cool to be sad. I don't understand it because my whole life I battled with depression trying to get better and then it's like, oh no, it's cool. It was never fucking cool when I went through it. I got made fun of for it. So I don't understand why people think it's cool and it's so glorified and it's so like punk. Like you have to be if it goes with your look. Like for example, my sister is a lot like me. She's fucking cool. I'm kidding. I mean, she dresses punk. She wears her band t-shirts and she wears her checkered jeans, her bands, her beanies, whatever, her wristbands. She does her own thing and she's gorgeous. She's adorable. Some kid came up to her and asked her, oh, what do you, what do you cut yourself? What are you going to go home and cut yourself? Like to match your outfit? Like, who the fuck are you? Like you have to cut yourself because you listen to bands? I've never heard of that. Ever. Like, I feel like everything, like, oh, what are you depressed? Why? Because she has a black veil bride's hoodie on? That does not make her depressed. This is why people have to stop with the labels and the stereotypes and things like that because a lot of it's not true. Depression is when you wake up every morning and you just feel like you don't want to do it anymore. And if you're making a joke about that or if you're just saying that to, for attention from a guy or for friends or sympathy, that's fucking offending, man. I fucking woke up every morning pissed that I was alive. I was fucking actually upset that I had to go through another day of fucking hell. And you're just saying it to get some guy's attention. You're not gonna say I have cancer if you don't have cancer. So don't say you're diagnosed with mental disorders that you don't have because it's really offending to people who actually had to go through it. And it's definitely something a lot more people should take seriously. If you feel like you're depressed and you want help, Please seek it. I mean, that was like a really big thing for me. I've gotten a lot of messages. I talk to a lot of guys and you say like, I feel crazy. Don't feel crazy. There's a ton of people like you going through the same thing. You're definitely not alone. Anxiety. I've been diagnosed with actual like the term anxiety. And anxiety is when you have a hard time 
um, you have difficulty handling certain things or, you know, you have anxiety attacks. Now, I feel very strongly about this because it's like, this is still something that interferes with my life. Um, it's not as bad as it used to be. I don't, you know, stay home from school like weeks on end and, you know, it doesn't make me want to kill myself or anything like that. But yeah, I feel like I, I, you know, I definitely do still struggle with it, but I know how to cope with it. It's under control once again. But, um, I've had people in my old school tell me that my anxiety attacks weren't bad enough. This is something that bothers me. It is almost impossible to go to school and to learn when you are having an anxiety attack. If you are throwing up in the middle of class, you can't focus, you're throwing up, you're sick, right? What's the difference if you're having an anxiety attack? Just because you don't physically see something, that means that it's not there. When you're having an actual anxiety attack and there's something wrong up here, it is just as important as if you have a physical illness. And I feel like schools and, you know, people should take that into account and definitely be more sensitive with it. And I've had people recently tell me that my anxiety attacks aren't good enough. They aren't, my problems aren't bad enough. That bothers me. Who are you to validate my fucking anxiety attacks? You're telling me what I can and can't feel. You can't validate my feelings. That's how I feel. You will never be able to go inside my head and feel what I feel. You will never be able to do that. So until then, until you can actually be in my shoes and say, wow, I know how you feel. Like literally, I feel you. Shut the fuck up. I've had people tell me in my old school, um, one of the like deans or I think he was assistant principal, but I could be wrong because I don't really give a fuck. Um, he told me that because I wasn't having a seizure, I wasn't having a bad enough anxiety attack. Um, please, tell me where... What? Plus, I was getting bullied at this point, so they told me, yeah, her anxiety attacks aren't that bad. Why? Because I'm not fucking freaking out in the middle of the hallway because I'm somewhat dealing with it. People are so oblivious. Whether you're going through... A stage in your life you are having depression or you're dealing with anxiety no matter what you're going through right now it will pass everything passes eventually this will just be another story it'll be another oh, I got through that I'm sitting here doing it with you guys three years ago four years ago five years ago I never thought I would get through it ever I thought it was the end of the world, but here I am making a video on how to deal with depression and that's crazy for me because it's like, I was hopeless. But you guys are not alone. I tell you guys all the time, each and every one of you have a purpose. Nobody else can play your- If you're dealing with mental problems right now, or depression, anxiety, you're not alone. You are definitely not the only one. There are so many people in this world, so fucking many, going through the same thing as you. You are not crazy. That is one thing. I always felt crazy. You are not crazy. Just because you are going through something that does not make you any less of a person than anyone else. And don't let anyone else tell you that. You are going to be okay. Nothing lasts forever. Whatever you're going through is not a phase, but it's a stage in your life. It's something that you just need to work through. Um, obviously this takes time and you know, like anything, you have to work at it to be better. And I believe in each and every one of you. And this goes for anything. If you're going through anything, you can overcome it. Last thing is that there is this um, organization called To Write Love on Her Arms and I'm a really big fan of them. If you follow me on any social media, um, or even my last video, I was wearing a hoodie that my boyfriend got me. It's To Write Love in Her Arms. To Write Love in Her Arms is a American nonprofit organization which aims to present hope for people struggling with depression, addiction, self-injury, and thoughts of suicide, and other things like that. They also invest directly into treatment and recovery, which is really awesome. They're an awesome organization, and if you're struggling with any of this, I know... It kind of helped me. I liked knowing that other people care. So look into that and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching and I hope that I helped.
you guys are awesome. So stay hopeful and stay strong.